Oh, hello. Today we have a guest on the channel who is a dear friend of mine. We have known each other for nine years. Nine years. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's depressing. To think about. <laughs> um, and we, I, I, okay, so this is my friend Kim. And while she was in town visiting from Canada, I felt like she was a fantastic person to help me with an idea I've had, which is basically a bookish version of Am I the A-Hole from Reddit. Because I feel like between us, we are actually pretty qualified to give bookish advice. I think through our combined life experience, we know. Yeah. We know who is the asshole. Yeah. I mean, so I am a book nerd, as is well documented. Both of us are trained in theology slash philosophy. And Kim professionally counsels people <laughs> in their like darkest moments, basically. <laughs> So yeah. I feel like we're pretty qualified yeah. to give decent advice. I feel that's one of the few things in life I feel confident about. Yeah, um, to be judgmental towards other people on the internet. Yeah, I feel like we can, but we're, we're going to be great at this. <laughs> so, uh, so if you've never seen AITA before, Am I the A-Hole? This is a Reddit forum where people will post quandaries and they will ask the internet's advice as to if they were the jerk in the situation, <clears throat> if other people are being the jerks, or if no one is the jerk, or if everyone's the jerk. So those are our options. You're the asshole, they're the asshole, you're both assholes, or no one's an asshole. We will render judgment upon these stories that people posted in this forum on Reddit, and all of these are bookish related. Mm -hmm. So, should we just dive in? Yes, before we dive in, I feel it behooves me to let everyone know, though I have come from Canada, I'm not Canadian. This is a good point. No, no. We met in Canada, yeah. but we're actually both from Tennessee. Yeah. The heart wants what the heart wants. <laughs> so we found each other. Sometimes when we needed it. you have to go, you know, to the other side of a continent <laughs> to find what was right in front of you all along. Yes. <laughs> so that is a good clarification. Yeah. But you've lived. You live in Canada. I do. I'm and there. you have lived there for nine, nine years. years. So I feel like you're, you know. Quasi Canadian. I'm working on it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, literally. Literally. Well, I'll never be Canadian, but I hope to be a citizen. Yeah. So, you know, if there are Canadians watching and you have any sway, if you could. You yeah. Know. Yeah. Please uh, put in a good word for me. Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's, That's how it works. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just like a, it's like a letter writing campaign. You have to get, you have to get 50 Canadians. I got a, yeah, yeah, 50. I've got a petition online. I'll send you the link. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It's like a GoFundMe, yeah. except it's like, please let me into your lovely country. <laughs> and don't force me to be an American anymore. No more. No more. That is a good clarification. Mm. So we're both from Tennessee, but, you know, we both have lived in Canada. I think we've adopted... Well, we have Southern niceness and also maybe some Canadian... Some nice Canadian perspective on the world. Mm. Yeah, particularly... Yes. The downstairs neighbor. Social issues, <laughs> I think, were... You get a very different perspective, let's say, when you... Life-changing, one might say. Yeah, one, one does say. Does say. <laughs> All right. Okay. This first one okay. is is not an actual, am I currently the asshole? It's a theoretical, like, would I be the asshole? Wow, okay. So it's from a couple months ago, so probably this has passed, but this is more like theoretical. Mm. Would I be the asshole if I still give my old book collection to my quote unquote niece? My br brother recently found out she isn't his against his wishes. So we were just talking about 23 and Me drama. This feels that's like this, right. that's this fits in that. Okay, so brother's daughter is not actually his. his. That's a blow. Yeah. So <clears throat> a little more information. Brother and ex-wife have been on and off since high school. They had my 11-year-old niece and split up for years, both having other kids, got back together and got married and had my two-year-old nephew. They then split again this year and my brother didn't believe the two-year-old was his because of infidelity and the court's order paternity tests for both my nephew and niece for child support because he signed both birth certificates. Mm -hmm. He 100% believed my niece was his and my nephew wasn't. Well, it was the opposite. Oh. He was the biological father of my nephew, but not my niece. Ouch. My brother was heartbroken. They had her very young. It was his firstborn and the only child of his to meet my mother and grandmother who passed away. She's the kid, the niece is named after the grandmother. So... 
Yikes. Yeah. So he's cut ties with them all. He doesn't speak to either the niece or the nephew at this point, but does provide for his other kids. He's kind of, okay. Well, yeah, I, I know. I've, lot, lot, got, lot I've already got thoughts, but okay, yeah. cool. Okay, this gets to the actual bookish piece okay. of this. So, Poster is an avid reader, and I have a large children's, preteens, young adult book collection that I haven't really looked at since high school. I'm moving out to my first apartment alone, and I have no space for them because of all of my other books. My niece has always loved reading them, and I had promised to give them to her if I ever got rid of them. She reads like 10 books a week. But the problem is my brother wants none of our family to have contact with his ex family besides our nephew, but he wants us, me and our other brother, to just not talk to the niece. Both of my parents are deceased, so our family is very small. They both died thinking she was in our family, and my brother found out recently that she's not. Our other brother has agreed not to speak to the niece, but I was always very close to her. I was 14 when she was born. So basically saying like, hey, I still wanna honor this promise of giving her this collection, but my brother really doesn't want me to speak to this niece anymore because yeah. of the betrayal. So would Poster be the asshole if he gave the niece the collection of books anyway? Absolutely not. Bro I agree. <laughs> brother, brother is being an asshole and taking out his hurt of betrayal on a child. On a literal child. That was... Who saw him as her father yeah, her entire life. It's no... Nothing's changed. Yes. Nothing's changed. You're mad at the mother. Don't yes. speak to her. The daughter has nothing to do with it. This uncle made a promise. Like, what if, what if it's, like, not even... It could just be any child that he'd met through a friend yes. or something. And But he made a promise to a kid who's going to use these books and enjoy them, and it'll enrich her life. I agree. Oh, brother, come on. Let's let's just take a moment and breathe yeah. and, and get our perspective straight here. That's really awful for that poor girl. I feel like... That's traumatic. I, I she's was, losing her yeah. father, and she's going to blame herself. Like, yes! I, I was born, and it's my fault. That my little brother doesn't have his dad in his life, really. Yeah. I'm I'm very disappointed in the brother in this situation because like it the, you thought this child was your daughter for 11 years that means she is your daughter yeah like even if she's not biologically yours in every sense that matters she is your daughter so like honestly shame on you for abandoning shame. this child who did nothing wrong this child is completely innocent in this situation you're now keeping her from also having a loving supportive uncle with whom she is very close and you're abandoning your biological child too you're you're yes. fully upset at mom. Understandably. Like, yeah, I get that not like, thrilled with mom. The, yeah, of course. But this is this is the reality of, like, broken relationships. If you have kids, like, you've got to... Power through. Power through. And yeah. Keep something together for the kids. I'll be very interested to see what kind of comments you get. You know, I, I don't come from a broken home other than the fact that my father... Well, both of our... Yeah. Fathers okay. were married before our mothers and, and had, had kids. Yeah. Um, and our half-siblings are fully our siblings. Like, yeah. We don't... Yeah, that's another point. This ki he, The kid who is his biologically, this is still that kid's sister. Yeah. This is absurd. Yeah. Poster sh is not the... Would not be the asshole. In fact, the poster seems to be the only one actually treating this child the way the child should be treated. Yeah, exactly. Which is with compassion and yeah, warmth. This, the, at, at this moment, more than any other moment, this kid needs, like, love. The person and... who is her uncle, yeah. by any meaningful... Yeah. Well, okay. That so, was pretty clear. -cut. Yes, I feel like we're very clear. Yeah. Give, give this kid who loves to read these books. I hope that there's, like, a, an update at some point. No, I don't think that there is. Okay, I hope... We're hoping that this guy ignored the brother, and gave the niece these books. What's the user's name who posted that? Aeoli Party 1069. It, okay, Aeoli Party 1069, love your niece, do what you need to do, your brother is an asshole, and he'll get over it. I, I, Once he gets his head on straight. Yeah. Once he gets his head out of his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just hit record again, I told Kim, we're judging people for content, I love this, so. I shouldn't be as good at this as I am. <laughs> well, uh, you, you literally give people advice for a living, so I feel like you're good at this. On their deathbeds. On their deathbeds. <laughs> okay, so this one is called, Am I the Asshole for Holding a Grudge for a Ruined Book? Ooh. I'm I'm gonna tell you guys right now. I'm predisposed to say yeah. no, but we're, we're, we'll find it. I don't. I saved these a long time ago, so I don't remember the details. Okay. Okay. I'm reading this massive paperback edition of a sci-fi trilogy. Loving it so far, and being 900 plus pages long, I've been extra careful in handling it. It basically was pristine and smelled like new. I temporarily placed it on the couch before having lunch. 
Later, one of my closest family members happened to pick it up and turned a few pages, all good. Then they fucking split it open by stretching it on their leg. 180 degrees, this happened all of a sudden and I intervene, intervened when it was already too late. Needless to say, the book, which was new, now has a big crease in the middle of the spine. I can touch it when I read the book and it's annoying. To make things worse, family member had just finished eating chocolate when they flipped through the pages and left a few traces of it oh. along the edges. I cleaned that bit up but a few smudges remain. I'm mad now. That damn thing costs forty dollars. That is a very expensive book. Okay, expensive paperback. Ma family member says I'm being ridiculous for being mad at them, but knows full well that I'm a book maniac, and they've been told not to damage the spines many times before. Another family member says I should have shouldn't have left the book unattended if I didn't want it to be damaged. I'm sorry, in my own home. Sorry, I love the tone of this poster. I relate very much to this poster's tone. That this wasn't an accident, that I can understand. It was deliberately picked up and careless, carelessly handled for no reason at all. Family member is not a kid and is well into adulthood. Am I the asshole? Edited, family member did apologize. Still, I think I will think twice before leaving other books around. Yeah, right. yeah, the whole like, well, you shouldn't have left it unattended. That. Yeah. I just feel like there's so many ways that, that we talk about things that to me are feeding victim right into blaming. victim blaming and like rape culture and stuff yeah. like that. Why did she dress like that? Yes. Why did she get drunk? Um, but anyways, I digress. I mean, we take the point. It is a book, but okay. it's so, a wider, but it's a wider cultural impulse to yes. say like, this is your fault. Yeah. 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 So I am the family member. <laughs> oh no. I'm so sorry. You're surrounded by I my did, books right now. I'm I, didn't, free. I didn't know that this was a thing until, um, a, a mutual friend of ours. I noticed that every time I would like pick up one of her books and then lay it down like that, she would <laughs> kind of passive aggressively pick it up while I'm making intense, while looking, eye, contact. While making intense eye contact yeah. and close it. And I was, and she never said anything. And, uh, but I realized that, oh, <laughs> people don't like to do that. <laughs> So I'm so sorry. Okay, well um, we've got both sides of the equation here. Right yeah, now. so I do think it's a bit of a strong reaction. However, if the family member knows that this is the preference uh, and and like how they want their books treated, yeah. I mean the chocolate that that cross is a big line. Like come on, yeah, that's gross. Yeah. Uh, also, why do you have chocolatey fingers? Just and like why are you touching things, things up? Yeah. So you're an adult, yeah. but. Yeah, so that, that's just not respecting boundaries. It doesn't matter if you think it's ridiculous. Yes, that's, that I is agree. Very simple respect of someone's uh, Space, requests and boundaries yeah. and their property. So yeah. I think the the person, in my opinion, it's a strong reaction, but it's yes. still like something they really love. So yeah, I think the family member was. Yeah, and I I'm glad that the family member apologized. I think that was the appropriate. And, and the fact that this person is saying, like, I'm just going to be more careful about when they're around my books. I, I will say, as the person who tends to be uptight about breaking spines, because I always take my books to the used bookstore. So I'm oh, always thinking about, like, resale value. That's fair. So I get, I get the feeling. I get the impulse. But, you know, accidents happen. I think, you know, an apology was warranted. It probably yeah. is not worth ruining a relationship over. So... Uh, yeah, I would be really careful. There's a, there's a point in that post where the person is... I think assuming that other that family members intentions did it on purpose. Yeah, exactly. I don't. Think, I, you gotta yeah. be careful there. But. It seems careless, not volitional. Yeah. I have so many other questions about what what was the book series? <laughs> was it a trilogy in one book? That's that's what I'm. Th I'm wondering if it was C.S. Lewis's space trilogy. I was thinking it was probably the Dune trilogy. If oh, it's 900 pages. It could, well, but isn't it like one of those books like 500 pages? 500 the first pages? one's really big. Yeah, yeah. The second one's, they get, they, the second one's about the same size and the, the third one, Children of Dune, is bigger. So maybe it, it probably just depends on like yeah, it could type be. size. Commenters, you guys speculate with us. What, what do you think this trilogy was and why do you think it cost $40? The reason I care is because the Dune trilogy it, is deeply meaningful to me. And so oh. I would... I would totally change my tone and be like, that asshole, get them out of your family. <laughs> they don't deserve you. But So your your <laughs> response is purely based on the type of what book we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's right. right. It's like, if this is just some like random sci-fi space trash, like Kim does not care. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> like uh, whatever. But get over if it. it's a dune, uh, that's a bridge too far. Uh, mm -mm. Okay. I mean, fair enough. If it was like an Agatha Christie, like that is fair. 
If somebody did that to one of my Agatha Christie collectible books, Ooh. I would be furious. Okay, see, that's let's keep going a little bit here yeah. because that's a that's a good point to like you know forty dollars for a paper is not that nothing. is not nothing. Yeah. And if this family member was aware, like that is super careless, and they know yeah. that like you really love this book, yeah. and they're just gonna like put their chocolatey hands put their chocolatey hands on it. Yeah, yeah. The, Come on. Yeah. So I'm glad they apologized. I think even if somebody were in one of my Christie collectibles, as long as I didn't think they did it on purpose, yeah. I, I don't think it would ruin a relationship. I'm glad that... I, I hope they can move forward. I think that everybody was being very emotional about this topic. <laughs> in a way that I can understand, frankly. But Okay, I think, I think that was that was a nice little, little bit lighter. Okay. Yeah, we started heavy there. Yeah. Let's see here. <clears throat> Am I the asshole for only buying my daughter books that are close to her reading level? It's interesting. Yeah, okay. I was intrigued by the title on this one. My daughter, Rose, who is nine, is a very advanced reader. She's in third grade, but reads at a ninth grade level. Wow. Despite her advanced reading level, the only books she wants to read are the I Survive series and the A to Z mysteries. A to, is that the murder mysteries? I don't know what the A to Z mysteries I, are, but... By that woman that A is for... Whatever, oh, like Sue Grafton? Yeah, maybe. Is that maybe. Right? I don't know, but that would be more advanced, so I feel like he'd be okay with it. <clears throat> Both of these books are far below her reading level, so I told her it's fine she wants to read them in school, but at home she has to read things that are closer to her level. I've taken her to the bookstore, and we've looked through the young adult section, but she refuses to read any of the books. She says they're all boring and gross. I mean, they are very sexy these days, so yeah, like, ugh. that we'll get into that. Yeah. Okay. She always asks to get books from the children's section, but I've said no because they're too easy for her. Rose has started sneaking books home from school, and when I started taking those away, she stopped reading in general. Now Rose has pulled away from me, and her teacher is recommending that I let her read whatever she wants. Rose's dad, my ex... Oh, okay, oh, okay. so this is... Well, we don't know. Could... Yeah. Likely a woman. Likely a mom. Yeah. But... Okay, Rose's dad, my ex, found out about this and tore into me for not letting Rose read books for kids of her age and offered to send her books, but that's not the problem. I don't have a problem with Rose reading, but if she's going to read, she should read something close to her level. Now everyone's mad at me and I want to know if I was the asshole. That's complex and probably says a lot about what is available for someone Rose's age. Like, yeah. That's actually good. Yeah. Like, why isn't Rose reading classic books? Like... The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, or... That's what I did when I was her age. Yeah. Like, I was an advanced reader, and I would just <clears throat> read a lot of classics. Yeah. But also because of the Jesus thing. I wasn't allowed to read, like... <laughs> <laughs> At school, I wasn't really allowed to read, like, you know... The, the, the sexy YA Yeah, series. exactly. I yeah. wasn't reading Cor A Court of Thorn Thorns and Roses, where, like, there's <laughs> fairy sex on every other page. Like, that was, that was not a, a viable option for me. Ah, uh, jeez. It's, it's still not for me. Um. Well... <laughs> Open your mind. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I don't feel like anybody's being an asshole. I just feel like they're being, they're not like thinking outside the box. What do you think? As someone, because as, I was not an avid reader when I was young. I'm still not a, what I would call an avid reader. Thank you for allowing me to uh, bless your page um, with my presence. <laughs> as a child who was an avid reader, yeah. what, what are your thoughts? Well, I feel like children if a child is interested in reading at all yeah. that is something that you should encourage yeah. so like as long as you don't feel like they're reading something wildly inappropriate like i get that if you you don't want your seven-year-old reading about maybe like super graphic violence or you know explicit sex or things that are just not developmentally appropriate for yeah. a child like i i understand that but i think that if she is interested in reading and she's reading things that are developmentally appropriate for her even if they're not as difficult in terms of, like, the complexity of the sentences, I think that she's telling you what she's ready to engage with, and she's just not ready to engage with some of the more mature themes that are in YA, especially now, because YA is so aged up, mm. because they're trying to appeal to adult readers like me. Like, actually, I started reading a lot more middle grade in the last year, because I find it is giving me the feeling I really enjoyed in YA, which is, like, kids learning about, you know, the world and themselves. I find YA is often quite mature. Yeah. So I feel like she's kind of telling you that she's just not ready for those themes. Like maybe maybe a compromise would be something middle grade, which is yeah. sort of like aimed at middle schoolers. Yeah. Um, which it would be a little more advanced than where she is now, but sounds like might be more developmentally where mm -hmm, she's at. Mm -hmm. And this is also a question about like 
how to parent well. I yeah. Mean, neither of us have And to co parent well with someone. And to co parent with an ex, yeah. exactly. But you know, kids kids are a lot smarter sometimes than we give them credit for. Yes. They have wills of their own. Like, work with them and if she's if she's very clear this is what I want to do, you know, work with her on that and then like have discussions and like you, it's a process like you're not yeah. gonna just know this is not good I mean except for very obvious things yeah um so I think work with the kid as they're growing and progressing and learning to process and learning what is and is not good for them and like that's that's I think part of raising another human being so yeah I said spoken by someone who doesn't have children yeah spoken <laughs> spoken very authoritatively by two people without children <laughs> look by this age we got a lot of friends with kids and uh yes I do I mean I have niece we have yeah, we have, we know, have nieces, nieces and nephews, nephews, so, I mean, you know, we Learn, have, we've learned vicariously. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, yeah, I agree. I think you're not really treating your daughter like somebody with their own thoughts and desires. Yeah. And I think that's an important part of establishing respect with your children. Yeah. Like, mutual respect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and helping her as, um, begin to develop, like, a groundedness in who she is. Like, exactly. This is what I like. This is who I am. Like, that... I think for myself yeah. as someone who didn't really get that grounding as a kid because I was just told what I liked or what yes. I needed to like. Yeah. Like, I think that's really huge. I don't think anybody's an asshole here. It's just, you know, the it's it's gray and you're learning how to parent a, a really smart kid. Yeah, which I'm sure is challenging. Totally. Yeah, but I think that's a good point. Like this, you know, it doesn't have to be this deep, but this is a part of like your daughter individuating yes. and being able to define her own boundaries and I do think it can be dangerous for for adults to teach children through the way that they're communicating with them that their boundaries don't matter because like I think that can lead to some real like that can put your kids in dangerous situations if that yes. gets reinforced too much absolutely um so yeah I think this is a great opportunity for you to respect your kids boundaries yeah yeah for sure yeah uh, good word well you know we are experts in parents <laughs> Uh, you're sure. welcome, yeah, parents. Exactly. We'll we'll, we'll send you the fee. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. Later. You you don't need to watch mommy bloggers. Just watch us. Well, I'll put my <laughs> PayPal info. Yeah, uh, in the, the description below. Exactly. <laughs> you're welcome. Some ther free therapy. Okay, let's see who else's problems we can solve. Oh, okay. Here's a good one. This is an, there's a lot of like parent kid ones in this. I'm finding. Yeah, that's with the books. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Am I the asshole for going off on my dad after finding out he threw away the books that I ordered? Again, I'm very pre-judgmental of this that oh gosh. you are not the asshole for this, but let's <laughs> find right. out. Whole story. Okay, I, 16-year-old male. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is like a nearly an adult. Okay. Read, read a lot, and my main interest is in horror fiction. Oh, oh, oh okay. No. I just I remember now why why I picked this okay. one. Okay. My parents, 42 and 38, are Christians mm. and don't like horror movies or anything they deem evil. They don't know that I watch that stuff, by the way. They just don't like it. I mainly borrow books or buy ebooks, but I recently ordered some hardcovers so I can build a horror collection. I bought them with my own money, and they were delivered today while I was with a friend. I came home and saw that my package had been opened and was empty. And when I asked my mom about it, I found out that my dad had opened it and threw away all of my books because he thought the covers looked creepy and didn't like them. I confronted him and told him that it didn't matter if he liked them or not because he's not the one reading them and they'll be kept in my room. He told me that it's his house and he doesn't want that kind of stuff around, but offered to give me money for more books as long as he can approve them first. <clears throat> we ended up getting into a yelling match and I cursed at him a few times and called him a prick before storming off. <laughs> My mom came to me later and said that my dad was really hurt by what I said and I should have shown respect to him because it is his house and he decides what's best for me. Am I the asshole for going off on him? Figured. I know. Okay, we should mention both Kim and I grew up uh, in fundamentalism, so this is like hashtag relatable content for us. Hashtag relatable. Though my parents were not, like my school was fundamentalist. My parents yeah. weren't. My parents pretty much let me read whatever I wanted. I self-policed based on... Yeah. Based my on social our, forces, our churches and yeah. and schools, yeah. yeah. But anyway, I I definitely let's say I'm not unfamiliar with parents who would have taken this approach, like people who wouldn't let their kids read Harry Potter because oh, it God. was witchcraft, yeah. like no twi, yeah, like. Mm -hmm. <sighs> 
Sorry. <laughs> We're going to have try to process many, many process, pregnant pauses. We're processing our trauma <laughs> <laughs> through this poor child. Please bear with us in this difficult time. Yeah, and that phrase of like, this is my house, mm -hmm. and therefore what I, yeah, that, that very male dominant thing that, that you can understand because sure, it was probably his money as a breadwinner that, that paid for a lot of the things that the child enjoys. But to be fair, that is a parent's responsibility. Like you can't blame a child for right. being provided for when you decided yeah. to have them. That meant that you signed up to provide for them. Yeah, which meant giving them a place to stay. <laughs> yes. And and I think this kind of ties into a little bit the, the, the last post in terms of boundaries. Yes. Why was he so. opening a package labeled for his son? That's a very, yeah. Um, That's I wonder if that's actually a federal, in theory, you're not, that is a federal crime, but if it's, it's, a, it's a minor, age, yeah, so. so, okay. If you were two years older, that would have been a crime. That would have been a crime, sir. I don't know if it would have, considering they live at the same address. Lawyers, uh, send Yeah, off. exactly. <laughs> Let us know in, or in post, the comments Or postal below. workers, yeah. maybe you yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. But just in terms of boundaries, why was he opening his son's mail? Yeah. I'm assuming the son paid for it. Yeah, he said it was with his own money. Now, I don't know if that was allowance money, or if that was money from but working what, a job, but. But once that money it was is put into your hand like it's yours right yes. like it's <laughs> <laughs> it's science it's, it's math it's math yeah. and science <sighs> so i totally respect that you know scratch that i don't know that i respect i do not respect <laughs> well here's here's the thing i mean there's a lot of genres and things that christians just don't understand because they don't actually read it and and that's a very good point it. and i think horror is one of those genres well you know frank uh, La La Pretty? Per Peretti. Peretti? Yeah, come on. This present darkness. Yes. <laughs> or was that Ted Decker? Oh, uh, no, I think that was Frank Pretty, but Ted Decker, Ted Decker is the other one. There's like, like the Christian and versions. Black and, yeah. yeah. Demons. <laughs> <laughs> demons. <laughs> yeah, I agree. There's a lot of like, there's Christian versions of a lot of genre fiction, but there's not a lot of reading of the actual Yeah, like they don't books. read Stephen King. No. But, and I, what I've recently learned in the last year, pop off at me in the comments or something, but I, I really loved the Netflix series Haunting of Hill House. Now, I know that you haven't watched it because that's one of your favorite books, and that's fair because yeah. I... I maybe, maybe I'll try it this October, though, because it's been a while since I've reread it, so... You know, just if you go into it understanding that it's kind of crappy that Mike Flanagan made the main character, or, you know, kind of the main character, a, a man, and it's... A, and not... It, instead of, like... Instead of... The revolutionary, potentially queer story yeah. that the original has. Yeah. Uh, there's that. that. However, anyway. <laughs> in the terms of the... Th the, the way he used horror to explore themes of grief and regret and trauma, just brilliant. I think it was really, really beautifully done. Yeah. And I think that horror can get at those, just in the way that poetry can get at beauty mm -hmm. and sorrow and all those things in ways that prose can't. I think mm -hmm. horror can get at some of those really deep-seated emotional parts and realities of human nature yeah. that other kinds of stories can't. So I don't I don't think that people who love horror are, you know, deviant. Just deviant or yeah. or just really dark messed up people. Yeah. Maybe sometimes. I mean there's if you're into grim dark then like maybe seek help. I don't know. But uh, uh Leanna, she's coming for your brand. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I'll 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 uh I'll learn more. I apologize. <laughs> But yeah, it, I think that there's a lot we can learn from it. And yeah. so to just assume that because you're reading a certain genre, this is why and it's Evil, destroying yeah. your mind. Too much of anything is usually a bad thing. So like maybe yeah. branch out. Um, but otherwise, so, so that's a bit of a tangent to yeah. just say. Like, but I think that's a really good point that you're calling out that the dad has a lot of assumptions yeah. about what these books even are like or what it means that his son likes them. Yeah, he's just, yeah. he's not even asking his son why. Why yeah. do you like this stuff? He's just going into immediately that control mode of like, I have to protect yeah. your mind as yes. the head of the household and as a Christian. You know, like it's that soldier mentality. It's like, you know what, God, yeah. God doesn't need your help. Like, <laughs> chill out, Dad. Okay, anyways, <laughs> sorry. God doesn't need you, Dad. <laughs> um, no, I, I agree with a lot of that. I think, you know, I do take the point that, like, household rules, I think, are reasonable for parents to set. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, I do think 
it seemed like the son was aware that this potentially was violating maybe not this an explicitly fair. stated household rule. Yeah, he but knew at his least, parents wouldn't like it. Yeah, it was at least he was violating the spirit of the law if he was not violating the letter. So, like, I do take the point that yeah. he, he may have knowingly been circumventing what were established household rules. But that being said, I think what we're saying is we think that those are kind of ill thought out rules. Yeah. And I do think that throwing away something purchased by somebody else is just fundamentally not okay. It's just rude. And it, oh. it going back to the last one we were talking about, I feel like it's a real violation of boundaries. Like oh. you're violating and trust. Yeah, like you're going is that through your worth kids. It? Yeah, you're going through your kids' mail. You're throwing away something that they spent their own money on, whether or not you gave it to them or they earned it, it was theirs to do with what they will, unless there was some sort of explicitly stated rule that they couldn't use it for something. So like, I just think that, yeah, to your point, like it's a huge trust violation. And is it really, I think the dad thinks he's being protective and that's why he feels so hurt by the son's response. But I actually think that the son's response is pretty, like you could expect it from a 16 year old who yeah. just had like their boundaries really violated and yeah. that they're angry about that. So, yeah. you know, I never, you know, I don't, I rarely think it's a good idea to swear at people, but he's a kid. Yeah. He's a, the kid, he's a kid. His yeah. brain isn't fully developed. He's got hormones rushing through For real. Him. I mean, like he's, he's like of, just experiencing a lot of firsts, including like yeah. a major boundary violation. Yes. So of course he's going to yell at his dad. Yeah. The dad, to me, that response of th- immediately throwing something away is so childish. Is yeah. So and he has no excuse in my mind. Mind. Yeah. Like sit down with your kid and exactly. have a conversation. If Treat he, them like a human being. They're yes. a human being. Yeah, I agree. Like I think if the dad wanted to get rid of the books, like let's say that this was a violation of the household rules and he felt like this was a boundary he wanted to enforce in terms of like, these are my rules and you're not respecting them. Yeah. The right way to handle that was not to just throw these books away. It was to sit down with the kid with the books and explain why and to agree that they were going to return the books, the kid could get his money back and and have like more clear rules about what books were and were not allowed in the house. Yeah. I think that's a bad idea anyway, but like if that was the route that he was gonna go. To, t- to do that, it that way, yeah. Yeah, that's at least like making, communication. That's communication, it's making things clear. Yes. It's respecting also, you threw away books. Brand new books. You're also perpetuating uh, overconsumption and destroying Just, the environment. So gosh. feel bad about that, Dad. Yeah. Though if Return he's the kind of dad them. I think he is, he probably doesn't believe. He, he believes that. it's all going to burn anyway. But anyway, <laughs> all around, not the right way to handle it. I also just think that this is dumb. Like he's a 16 year old. He's allowed to drive a car, presumably. Like he's presumably handling like a piece of machinery that can kill people and does kill people. Mm -hmm. Probably allowing your kids some discretion in terms of what books they think are appropriate for themselves is I think pretty reasonable for a 16 year old. In two years, he's going to have to sign up for the draft. Yeah. He's going to be able to vote. He's going to be out on his own theoretically. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I just think. Prepare your kids. Exactly. To be their own person. Equipping your children to make their own decisions, particularly at that point in their development, seems to me to be a bigger priority than protecting them from a boogeyman that you don't even really fully understand. Yeah. It's, you know, we could. We uh, have some bias here, I know. Yeah. but. But, but really. Do you think it's also part of this remnant of the satanic panic? Yes. You're wrong, You're wrong about. about. Yep. Yeah. Podcast, the best. Sarah Marshall, we love you. Yes. Please release your book now. Okay. Right. We're waiting. We're Sarah, waiting. Bless us, queen. We want your book. Um, okay. Yeah. So I think we, we have some both experience and bias coming to that one, but I feel like we yeah. we handled this. Let's let's do one more. One more. Okay. I'll give you a, uh, I'll read a couple and you can tell me which one you think is the most exciting. Am I the asshole for sharing my honest opinion about a book? Am I the asshole for not wanting to read my partner's books that they're writing? Um, that they're writing? Yeah. Oh. And would I be the asshole if I didn't warn my friend about a potential triggering part of a book she's going to read? I'm kind of fascinated by the second one. Okay. Am I the asshole for not wanting to read my partner's books? That they're writing. That they're writing. Like that's, that, that put it, like when you <laughs> like, said just read my partner's books, I was like, oh no, but that they're writing? Yeah. I don't know. I can't wait to hear this. Okay, this one's pretty short and sweet. So, so my partner's a writer and I'm an artist. I used to be a reader in my childhood, but as my ADHD went unmedicated and I relied on my phone for most entertainment, my attention span got shorter and now I don't enjoy reading anymore. Mm-hmm. I try, but it's difficult. The problem is my partner really wants me to read his books. His logic is that he looks at my art 
and so I should read his books. Mm -hmm. But I feel like that's an unfair comparison because reading takes a hell of a lot longer than glancing at a drawing and going, <clears throat> nice. I read part of his, <laughs> a part of a few of his books, and I try to be encouraging and ask him what he's writing because I'm happy it makes him happy and I care. But I just don't want to read. Am I in the wrong here? Should I just try harder to focus? I also want to add that I've asked him to read them to me, and I'd be happy to listen because I like his voice and audiobooks I do really well with, but he doesn't want to do that either. I feel like you've proposed a completely reasonable compromise. That, that was going to be my suggestion. Yeah. And then I wondered, like, oh, but can she sit still long enough to even listen? She said she likes it. she said she could, so you're just being a jerk. That's what I think, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I take the point of, like, it's good to be involved in your partner's pursuits. Like, I think that that's fair enough. But it seems like she's proposed a very reasonable compromise yeah. that you're not going along Like, with. if you truly want her... Well, okay. So let's... I'm trying to take it from his perspective, too. We've always got to remember there's two sides to every story. Well, considering his perspective, he's writing... Like, that's a vulnerable thing yeah. to write something and put it out there in the world. Clearly, he cares about her opinion. I remember in college... I specifically chose the English class where I knew I wouldn't have to read my papers in front of people. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, I... Oof, oof. So maybe reading it out loud to her would be really scary yeah. for him. Yeah, yeah. Because he, he just wants her to go away and read it and then come back and he doesn't have to deal with the stress of watching her react to it live, watching her not get stuff or not be as excited about something yeah. that, as he would want. So I could get that. But again, like, where's the communication? Like, why aren't we talking about why don't you want to read it to me? Yeah. Otherwise, it sounds like she's trying to be involved and at least know what the books are about. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So maybe nobody's really the asshole. You just need to actually talk a little bit more. Yeah, it turns out talking is usually a big part of the answer. But, I mean, I... I take the point of he wants her to read because, well, I, let, me, let me throw this out there. You let me know how you, I, I do get a little bit of quid pro quo, quo -ism underlying this. Yeah. Of like, well, I do your thing. Yes. Why can't you do mine? Yeah, that is, a, that is um, a hole, <laughs> a deep hole that I think people can fall into in relationships of like, yeah. this is transactional. That, Absolutely not. Yeah, I get a little hint of that. Yeah. And I don't want to generalize, but I will say, in my experience, I do see that oftentimes in relationships, um, men want credit for doing things for their partner yeah. in a way that women don't always expect in return. Yeah. So I guess I would say, I feel like interest in your partner's pursuits should come from a place of curiosity about them as a person. Yeah. And without expectation of reciprocity. Now granted, in a healthy relationship, there will be reciprocity because yeah. they will likewise have a curiosity about what you're doing. So... and it, But it sounds like she's trying to... I mean, and again, it's from yeah. her perspective. Yes. To the best of her ability. I'm curious... I'd be curious if when he looks at her art, if he does indeed only say... Nice. It or is does he say like, yeah. wow, walk me through this particular method. It looks different from yeah. the last few that you've done. You know, like, is there genuine curiosity of like, or, or what were you feeling when you, what, yeah. you what, what is this about, you know? Or like, are you talking about the, pro like, could you compromise by just talking about like the process that you're both going through of like, you know, I'm working on this painting and I'm trying to get this specific color the way that I want it and I'm struggling and maybe he can talk about, you know, I'm working on the scene and I'm struggling to get across the characterization or whatever. Like I, maybe you could talk more about the process. I'm questioning this, this person's vulnerability, this, the, the man. Mm -hmm. I'm questioning his ability to be vulnerable. This is total like... Well, we know everything. We're, we know everything and um, so I can is... tell everything about you from just a paragraph. I'm, yeah. Uh, Written by your partner when she's mad at you. Yeah. <laughs> Oh God! Yeah. Can you imagine? <laughs> oh, um, but I, I, I really want to know what what is the end goal yeah. here for her actually reading your stuff? Are you just looking for validation? Like, oh my gosh, Checking honey, you're box. so brilliant! Yeah. Oh my gosh, I think your stuff is so great. Pulitzer Prize, you know, all these yeah. kinds of things. Or because maybe he does talk to her about the process. We, she didn't really get into that, but yeah. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna bet no. He doesn't. And he just wants the end result of like, we look at each other's work and tick the box and that's how we're involved. 
Yeah, and I, I, again, I do take her point that it is a different time commitment for Oof. someone to enjoy yeah. a painting or a drawing versus reading a whole ass book. Yeah. Yeah. And a whole ass book that might be uh, still being edited. And it's you not... have ADHD and you struggle to focus and you're not like, you're not a reader, period. Like, that's not your thing. I can understand the difficulty in understanding that. Like, I, when yeah. she said that, I just... From the depths of of myself, I kind of just heard myself say in the back of my mind, like, just try harder. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, ableism is a thing. It is we a thing. We all have it. Maybe he's just thinking, well, that's that's not a real thing. You can just, yeah, you can make yourself do it if you loved me. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to put words in his mouth. Well, yeah, but I think that's a good subtext here. Maybe there's some ableist, like, I don't really think your thing is a thing, and yeah. you're doing this to punish me. Yeah, or you're, yeah, you're doing this because you don't actually care about my work. Basically, we're not wild about this guy. Yeah, and that might not be fair. <laughs> That's probably not fair, but I... Mean, I from my perspective, yeah. clearly she needs to be with a woman because the woman would be like, yeah, um, can I get you your medicine? Can I... Yeah. How about I write about your experience? Um, and read it aloud to you while I feed you grapes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Kim's just flexing that I'm stuck being attracted to men. <laughs> basically, that's what you're saying. I'm sorry. It's been a theme. It's been a theme for the weekend. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> well, I had so much fun doing that, that I have to say. Fantastic. Yeah, I feel like we solved some problems today. I feel like people really should just come to us. For, yeah, to... we'll, we'll start an, an advice podcast yeah. uh, c coming to you soon after we do all the other things in our lives. Yeah, we don't have anything else. When we're on. 50. Yeah. This will be our retirement plan to yeah. solve everyone's problems. But. I think we should invest in rocking chairs soon. Cracker Barrel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a deep cut. <laughs> oh, I love Cracker Barrel so much. And I, unironically, I love Cracker Barrel. No, it's just good. Yeah. Well, guys, everybody say thank you to Kim for being a guinea pig for this format. I, I had a good time. I hope you guys had a good time. But yeah, definitely let us know below your thoughts on the topics we tackled. Yes. Did we get them right, in your opinion? Do you have a different perspective? Mm -hmm. Let us know that in the comments below. Let me know if you like this idea. I have a couple of other friends I think might be fun to do this with, so this potentially could be friends? a friends? Well, now I'm hurt. <sighs> this is awkward. <laughs> Hey. You're not the only one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you had to find out like this. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below, and I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today, and I will just talk to you soon. Bye! Bye.